zipper than it is with the snaps. Mm -hmm. Then there's zippers up the side so that the jacket will fit tightly around the hips, keeping that straight, sleek look that it should have. And very often you'll find a zipper hidden in the uh, arm. And Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You'll excuse the fact that I'm out of breath, but about 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Let me quote to you this. And I'll, you'll excuse me if I am out of breath. A bulletin, this is from the United Press from Dallas. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired. The president, his limp body carried in the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, has rushed to Parkland Hospital. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, some 38 minutes ago. So here we are. We're in Dallas, Texas. This is probably going to be a little bit different than what we normally do. We are sitting here at the assassination of JFK. That happened. Well, Dealey Plaza. The Dealey Plaza. Let's say that instead. <laughs> so, November 22nd, 1963. We weren't even thought of yet. Nope. November 22nd, 1963. Almost two months from now. That's crazy. Lee Harvey Oswald took three shots and killed JFK. We're sitting here in Dealey Plaza. All the way around here, the book depository is over here. But, okay, like, it makes you wonder. This is, like, affected, mm -hmm. the windows. This is wide open. What? My conspiracy theorist mind is going right now. We're not even there yet. <laughs> I know, I'm just thinking. I know, it's crazy, right? So, now... So they turn off of Houston right over here. They come traveling down. And then they hear a gun crack. Not knowing what it is. Everyone thinks it's a backfire. Because the vehicles are kind of changing gears and everything else. Something might be a firecracker. Then you hear another shot. And then you see JFK reach for his throat. Now. Over in this direction, Mr. Zapruder over here shot his famous film. And then the grassy knoll, which is famous over there. But, Amber, you've never been here. No. It's a lot smaller. Like, this area is a lot smaller than I thought it was. Right? But it was also in the 60s, yeah. which was... So the trees have grown almost, 60 years. Yeah. But then, like, as many people as there was here... Right. That's crazy. Let's go down to the street. Yeah. So we're coming down to the street. You can see a lot more information. And Amber's going to be able to see a lot more. So they have a placard here. Dealey Plaza has designated a National Historic Ma Landmark. And that's where they de designated. Right here is the grassy knoll. And right up there is the book depository. So everything in this area is JFK. They have JFK quotes. Over here they have the JFK Memorial. Over here too. Everything here is all about JFK and his presidency and his assassination. I mean, 104 people sat here and watched this assassination. 104 people. So if you know JFK assassination, you know of Abraham Zapruder and the Zapruder fan film. Over here is where he shot it. Yeah. So the motorcade came from over here. They came down this road. And they followed all the way down. What you see on the ground is you see the two shots there, and then you see the fatal shot right here. Kennedy's motor makes a turn from Maine onto Houston. 
It's gonna be a turkey shoot. They don't shoot him coming up Houston, which is the easiest shot for a single shooter in the book depository. They wait. They wait till he gets to the killing zone between three rifles. Kennedy makes a final turn from Houston on the Elm, slowing down to some 11 miles an hour. The shooters across Dealey Plaza tighten, taking their aim, waiting for the radio to say, green, green, or aboard. Aboard. The first shot rings out. Sounding like a backfire, it misses the car completely. Frame 161, Kennedy stops waving as he hears something. Conley's head turns slightly to the right. Frame 193, the second shot hits Kennedy in the throat from the front. Frame 225, the president emerging from behind the road sign. You can see that he's obviously been hit, raising his arms to his throat. The third shot, frame 232, hits Kennedy in the back, pulling him downward and forward. Conley, you will notice, shows no signs at all of being hit. He is visibly holding his Stetson, which is impossible if his wrist has been shattered. Conley is turning here now, frame 238, the fourth shot. It misses Kennedy and takes Conley in the back. This is the shot that proves there were two rifles. Conley yells out, my God, they're going to kill us all. Somewhere around this time now, another shot that misses the car completely strikes James Craig down by the underpass. The car breaks. The sixth and fatal shot, frame 313, takes Kennedy in the head from the front. This is the key shot. The president going back and to his left. Shot from the front and right. Totally inconsistent with the shot from the depository. Again, back to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. And then, unfortunately, the X marks a spot. And this is where... Uh, this is where JFK... Had that kill shot. Okay. I don't know if how you guys would feel, but these guys are taking selfies and pictures of the X's and stuff. We are too, but not like to no, this we're level. Not doing selfies. But we're, we're not doing, doing selfies. Video. Sorry, we don't want to. We don't want to have any kind of negativity on our channel. But this is that. This is just borderline unbelievable. This is, it's disrespectful, I believe. It is. All right, so we had the book depository. Up here in the window, you have the sniper's nest, where it is said that Lee Harvey Oswald took that final is shot. That, that's where that, that marker is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's where he took his, his three shots. Now, we're not going to entertain any kind of conspiracy theory. There are a lot. There are a lot. Yes. Let's just be honest here. Now, Amber and I subscribe to the fact that it was a conspiracy. There, there was probably multiple gunmen, but we're not going to entertain that. We're just going to go with the straight facts of what, what's, what's happening. So the famous grassy knoll was right here. Now, do you remember hearing about the guy with the umbrella? Yeah. He was sitting over here. So was the babushka lady. She the babushka was lady was over here. I will say Amber's more astonished at the fact that this is very, 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 very very smaller than what you would imagine. It is. It's like, it's crazy. There's traffic, there's people. Like, it's a little crazy. It is. I don't know how much you can see, but they went down Main Street, took a left on Houston, drove all the way down onto Elm. The reason why they did that was because of the parade route. And then you had the full gamut of everything here minus the cars obviously so after the third and final shot they sped off going this direction and that's where they headed to Parkland Hospital where JFK would later die definitely the president's car we can see the first lady's paint suit that's the only identification we could see but we know it is the president's car 
another car directly behind the presidential car. There were also bodies in that car. Another Secret Service man spread eagle over them. We don't know. Perhaps there were some hit in that car as well. We're not sure. And just now we've received reports here at Parkland that Governor Connolly was shot in the upper left chest, and the first unconfirmed reports say the president was hit in the head. That's an unconfirmed report that the president was hit in the head. The president's wife, Jackie Kennedy, was not hurt. She walked into the hospital at her husband's stretcher side. And a Dallas newsman, Mal Couch, said he was riding shortly behind the president in the parade. He said after the shots were fired, he happened to look up at about the fifth or sixth floor of the Texas Book Depository. He said he saw the rifle being pulled back in. President Kennedy has been given a blood transfusion at Parkland Hospital here in Dallas in an effort to save his life after he and Governor John Conley of Texas were shot in an assassination attempt in downtown Dallas. A priest has been ordered, emergency supplies of blood also being rushed to the hospital. Just a moment, just a moment, we have a bulletin coming in. We now switch you directly to Parkland Hospital and KBOX News Director Bill Hampton. The President of the United States is dead. Not to contradict what we said, but some theories say that there is gunmen up in this building right here, this building beyond, but we'll never know. Afraid that people who may know are now gone. This whole spot was actually here, and Amber would have been standing right here, or Mrs. Zapruder would have been standing right here, and then you would have gotten the whole shot. I mean, it is. I think so. Now, let's just be honest here. Now, as a YouTuber, this would be the perfect spot for a panoramic view of someone coming in. Or sitting on here. Yeah. So no one could get in your way. I mean, so you have the X right right here, and then you have the two shots here. Now, we. So didn't they say that, he, they, that they saw him, JFK, first hit his throat and then his head? Yeah, so. Jack and then and then Jackie said and then Jackie was like they killed him and then she doesn't remember saying that and then she said something else but I don't remember and then she went to get her his the graphic here but his brains on the trunk right there's there's several people but these other amateurs shot in the back of the head didn't capture you would see the famous scene of Jackie jumping on the back of the hood or the back of the trunk. And that would have happened like around this area. Now, Jackie claimed that she did not remember doing this, but Miss Connolly, the governor's wife, testified in the Warren Commission that Jackie repeatedly said, They have killed my husband. I have his brains in my hand. There is speculation on why she got on the trunk. One was to be treated part of Candy's skull and brain matter. The other was that she was in shock and panic and trying to flee. And the last one was that she was trying to help the Secret Service person. Now, a total of 104, 104 people witnessed this assassination. Uh -huh. 54 thought all shots came from the book depository building over here. So more than half, a little more than half. Correct. But the echo-ness yeah. the buildings and stuff too, right? Right. Now, 33 said that the shots came from here or the triple overpass 33 so that's okay, a third so, that's so nine thought that the location came from entirely distinct from the no order depository five thought that the shots came from two locations and three thought the shots originated from a direction consistent with both the null and depository so but as amber was alluding to you have here you have this building right here, right behind. You have this building. That's a perfect view though too. Right. Compared to the depository. Yeah. So, I mean. So you would have snipers here. Mm -hmm. You have a sniper there. Now in the movie, the JFK, the movie with uh, Kevin Costner, they basically said you, br you bring him on Elm down here and you have him come down and it's basically a turkey shoot. And it really is, if you think about it, all these buildings. Whose idea was it for him to go top the, with the cover down? His, because he loved the people. Okay, so they, so at that time, nobody knew that it was gonna happen. So what if the top was up? Would they still carry on with it? Probably not, I would imagine no. I would, with I mean. With all those snipers out there? Yeah. Now this is the, this is different. No, okay, so remember the, when we moved to the Titanic and all the rules that we have today for the cruises that changed. Yeah. So 
that's kind of what happened here. So the Secret Service changed how they how they protect the president. Yeah. So they would have their own Secret Service snipers everywhere, watching the whole area. They would have, they wouldn't have allowed him to have an open. But if you also think about it, no one's paying attention to any snipers, quote unquote, right? Because everybody's facing each other, which is the road, right? Which is perfect for a sniper who wants to right. cause harm. But the the guns back in the '60s were different than what they are now. Correct. But I don't know. It's a lot to think about. It is. A lot of questions are out there, like I'm asking and saying. So. Yeah. If you have any, leave in the comments. Right. Or let us know a new conspiracy theory. Right. We like hearing them. We do. I mean, who do you think did it? I mean, that's a, that's the main question. So, so since you, we are on the topic of conspiracy, many conspiracy theories suggest that the assassination involved people, involve people or organizations in addition to elite Harvey, Harvey Oswald. Most current theories put forth a criminal conspiracy involving parties as Varied as the FBI, the CIA, the U.S. military, the mafia, the Vice President Johnson, Cuban pre President Fidel Castro, the KGB, Jackie. or some combination of entities. Yeah, I don't know how she would want to kill her husband, but he was a cheating, cheating guy. Well. Public opinion polls have consistently shown that most Americans believe that there is a conspiracy to kill Kennedy. Gallup polls have have also found that. Only 20 to 30 percent of the population believe that Oswald acted alone. So that means 70 percent of Americans Ish. believe that Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. But leave a comment down below. What do you think? Who do you think killed nice President? At, yeah. There's so many different possibilities. But now we're going to head over here because we have a time to, v to go inside. We cannot film. We can take pictures. We can take pictures, so we'll add some pictures. But we're really excited. Right here they have two X's of where the first shot rang out and then the second shot hit Kennedy in the back of the neck in the throat area. And supposedly the magic bullet that can just do whatever it wants to do. Go three different directions. Multiple actually. I think it was like 12 wounds that they found on Connolly. 12 wounds from one bullet. Is that possible? I don't know. Is it? Just saying. And then he drove down, and then that's where the final headshot was. Now, looking back at the triple overpass, you can see how it could have happened where people could. But, like, this is sitting in, like, a nice little bowl. Look at it. I mean, we are in a bowl area, so it, the echo effect could make it sound like shots were ringing out everywhere. Pretty fascinating, huh? So, this is the grassy knoll where some people say they heard shots come from. We'll see how it looks. Imagine, if you will, you were a gunman. Now, nothing really has changed as far as the building and everything else, but could you have a shot? I don't know. What do you think, Amber? You play Call of Duty. Pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> but if Did you, you have a shot, I mean, you have the shot for the had, X. If you had enough time to get your get your sniper ready and everything, because those take a while to load and reload. Yeah. But if you had multiple, so if you, you had, could just go pew pew pew. Right. So if you have Lee Harvey Oswald up in the book depository, making more racket noise because yeah. of the gun he used, and then. A gunman here. And one over here. Because you had to have, if you had one here, there had to have been one over here on the right side and one over here. But let's just say, for example, you miss, you have a shot right here. Now, Amber, my darling wife, wanted me to point this out because in the, the movie the, and the reports, this is where the i don't know i can't remember his name sorry about that but there was a gentleman here security guard that would watch over here and would saw suspicious men unload stuff from their car and come over here to the grassy knoll so you said they were wearing black they're wearing black they look they look suspicious all kind of stuff so i mean it, it's still a working train track location so I can see how, yeah, I mean, 
again we're just providing you the scenes and some information you it's up to you guys to decide <laughs> and leave comments let right. us know email us send us pictures more information for sure now there are a lot of experts here like there's two guys that are selling books that they wrote about jfk and there's tour guides mm -hmm. so but this is the back book depository from the back end of the building and we're going to the sixth floor soon soon All right, so we just arrived over to the Oswald rooming house. So at 12.40, 10 minutes after the shooting, Oswald boarded a city bus, probably due to the heavy traffic. He requested a transfer from the driver and got off two blocks later. Oswald then took a taxi cab to his rooming house on 1026 North Beckley Avenue and entered through the front door at 1 p.m. According to the housekeeper, Erlene Roberts, Oswald immediately went to his room, walking pretty fast, supposedly. Roberts said that Oswald left a few minutes later, zipping up a jacket he was not wearing when he had entered earlier. As Oswald left, Roberts looked out the window at her house and last saw him standing at the northbound Buckley Avenue bus stop in front of her house, which would have been right here. Now, other reports which we're about to go to says that he would have walked this way to go to where well he would go to where he would find officer tippet 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 and that's where he shot him now we haven't called them to see i'm sure they're used to us being here um it's also 10 till 5. yeah so. but they uh they do appointment only so i'm sure they're used to people like us filming in front but it's pretty crazy that this is the house you know, when you think of the JFK assassination, you think of something bigger. Like, everything was bigger. Well, also on, like, the movie, it looked, like, the inside looked bigger. It, right. It could be different. We just got done shooting over at the Oswald Rooming House. Museum. We, museum, sorry. <laughs> it is now a museum. Um, and we called the number to see if they're still doing tours. Well, we got there 10 minutes before it closed. 10 yeah. before 5, so. So, the lady answered, sweet lady. And she... Sorry. Um, she recommends doing her tour, which is $30 a person, and it's for two hours. And she gives you all of her insight of knowing, knowing Lee Harvey Oswald. Because her grandmother owned that place. That's crazy. $30 yeah. a person, I'd do it. I would. I like To me, normally it's a lot of money, but I'm like, no. Yeah, I mean, so down here, I'll post that number. Definitely if you're in Dallas call her if you are interested in the jfk thing because that's Use just that to her or mention I, that yeah so yeah i that's so cool and i even made the comments like yeah everyone who knows lee harvey oswald said that he would never have done this and she goes i firmly believe but you can only know more if you take my tour so dang, dang, dang. 
<laughs> Again, not to do the whole conspiracy. What or, a cliffhanger. <laughs> I know. I mean, she knows how to bait you for sure. But she, sweet lady, highly recommend. Go to her. Go if you're in Dallas and you are interested. Call her up. $30 I can a show person. Her the picture that also shows the number too. Yeah. And it was also in, in our shot. But I, I just want to kind of, that was pretty cool. So I just want to kind of share that with you guys. Um, but we are off to the next site. Moving on. <laughs> so, so over to your right is the old, the old rooming house. And we're gonna go to the left. left to the way he was walking. Yes. So Brian changed his mind, yeah. right? It's all on a GPS and it kept turning me around. So we're I in the we're right good. pack. Yeah. Right now we're on Beckley, right? Yes. Now we're not exactly sure where, what path he would have taken, but, but we're just going to go. This could be a path. Yes. And it's 504, obviously we're driving, so it's going to be a lot faster. With 97, 100 degrees, like yes. no way. This does feel like you did step back into the 1960s though. Especially with that truck there. Yeah. <laughs> the buildings are really cool though, like the houses and stuff, not like the newer ones. Like these so, buildings are, no. Now here's a question. So it looks like we're going up to this main drag here. Now, if you were Oswald and you were trying to flee and not be seen, would you have taken and gone out to here? Or would you have tucked away? See, that's a hard thing. Like, no one knows what route he went. He just knows, everyone knows where he supposedly shot Officer Tippett. Turning on Davis. And then we're going to take a right on Peyton. Patton. Patton, there's a Patton, there's a Patton. I'm sure everyone that lives in this area are used to people like us <laughs> driving around. In circles. I'm sure there was no school here. I don't know, it's like hard to say how it would have looked way back when, right? And there's a placard. So he would have gotten shot right Where here. Is there a placard? Right here. We'll pull into that driveway. So 10th and Patton. 10th and Patton. And we got here and it's 506. Two minutes. Yep. So we'll stop at that little placard. So the Warren Commission concluded that approximately 115 Dallas Patrolman J.D. Tippett drove up in his patrol car alongside Lee Harvey Oswald. So I've been right in this location right here. And we'll try to post in some pictures of what it would have looked like back then. They assume J.D. Tippett stopped Oswald because of the public or the police broadcast description of the man seen by witness Howard Brennan who fired shots at the presidential motorcade. So uh, shortly after 115, Tippett exit his car. Oswald immediately fired his pistol and killed the policeman with four shots. There's a number of eyewitnesses that identified him as the one that shot Tippett and fled. There are four cartridges that was found in this area. Oh wow. So they do have the Tippett grave site location. Wow, he left behind one wife. Well and wife. His wife well, and yeah, three okay. kids. <laughs> Good lord. Wow. So Oswald appeared at Hardy's shoe store shortly after my Brewer heard a radio broadcast that a police officer had been shot and killed nearby. Brewer followed Oswald to the Texas Theater, where employee Julia 
Hoso called police due to Brewer's suspicion. There, Oswald attempted shoot, to shoot arresting officer M.N. McDonald. So now we're headed towards the theater. 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 But this is the site where J.D. Tippett. So, you know, thank you for your service, Officer Tippett. Appreciate it. Everything you did. So the last place that Lee Harvey Oswald went to was the Texas Theater, which is only about five minutes away from where he supposedly shot Officer Tippett. So store shoe manager Johnny Brewer testified that he saw Oswald ducking into the entrance alcove of this store. Suspicious of his activity, Briar watched Oswald continue up the street and slip in without paying into the nearby Texas Theater where the film Wars Hell was playing. He alerted the theater's clerk, ticket clerk who phoned the police at 1.40. As police arrived, the house lights were brought up and Brewer, Brewer pointed out Oswald sitting near the rear of the theater. Police officer Mark uh, Nick McDonald testified that he was the first to reach Oswald and Oswald seemed ready to surrender, saying, well, it's over now. McDonald said that Oswald Pulled out pistol tucked into the front of his pants, then pointed his pistol at him and pulled the trigger. McDonald said that the that the pistol did not fire because the pistol's hammer came down on the webbing between the thumb and the index finger. So this is the theater. He would have tucked in. He would have went into one of these. One of these doors, and then he would be apprehended. Now, supposedly inside here, this is an active theater, um, but they do have seats that say uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's arrest or something along those lines. I'll see if I can't pick, pick, find a picture and post it. But this is the final place that Lee Harvey Oswald was found before he was shot, and that's where we're headed to next. Now where his apartment is and where everything else is, is right down this way. So that he would have came all the way from down here, walked this way, sorry for the sun glare, over here to the theater. And that's where he would duck in without paying and then be apprehended by the police. Now the police did rough him up a little bit. He did have a wound and that's why he said that he was actually struck by the police. In the wake of the Kennedy assassination, the Dallas police, on the one hand, they, they were committing all of the resources to trying to solve the crime. Could you move him in the doorway? When you get him in the doorway, all right, the doorway. On the other hand, they were ill-equipped to handle this tsunami of reporters. Well, I was uh, questioned by a judge. However, I uh, protested at that time that I was not allowed legal representation. In bringing Oswald out, they were, of course, doing something that you would never see happen today. But they were trying to cooperate with the press with the understanding that there would not be questions shouted at him. Did you kill the president? No, I've not been charged with that. In fact, nobody has said that to me yet. Uh, the first thing I heard about it was when the newspaper reporters in the hall uh, asked me that question. You have been. Nobody said what? Sir? You have been. Nobody said what? Okay, we can't hear you. Okay. What did you do in Russia? So, this happened on Sunday, November 24th. Detectives were escorting Oswald through the basement of the Dallas Police Headquarters toward their armored car. At 11.21, Dallas nightclub operator Jack Ruby approached Oswald from the side of the crowd and shot him once in the abdomen in close range. The shot rang out. A police detective suddenly recognized Ruby and explained, Jack, you son of a blank. Mike. The crowd outside the headquarters burst into applause when they heard that Oswald had been shot. And then Lee Harvey Oswald would later die in the same hospital that... JFK. That JFK died. But two days later. But two days later, yeah. Um, we aren't going to go there, but if you want to pay your respects or whatever to Lee Harvey Oswald, he is buried in a Fort, we Fort Worth cemetery. But our story here has ended. Maybe next time. We'll Maybe have next a part time. Two. <laughs> <laughs> but it's pretty crazy. 
over 50 years ago, 60 years ago almost. 60 years. That's crazy. In two more years, that's crazy. Question about it. Oswald has been shot at point blank range, fired into his stomach. He is shot. He is shot. Oswald. He is shot. It is Oswald. You're Oswald. Was that the man that shot the man, or do you know? That is the man that shot the man. Miss Amber, how do you feel that this story has come to an end? It's interesting. All this stuff that has happened. Yeah. 